All right, we're gonna deal with multiplication and division uh, of our measurements. And multiplication and division has different rules than addition and subtraction. So you really have to focus on what mathematical operation am I doing? Am I doing addition and subtraction? One set of rules. Am I doing multiplication and division? Another set of rules. So for multiplication and division, we are going to be counting the number of significant figures in our measurements. So when I look, I have two measurements here. This measurement has three significant figures. And this measurement has two significant figures. Now, when I put that in my calculator, my calculator doesn't know how many significant figures I want in my answer. So you're gonna get a spew of numbers. So here's what my calculator spewed out. This is an answer with four significant figures. <clears throat> When we're dealing with multiplication and division, our final answer will have the least number of significant figures of the least significant measurement. So that means my final answer should have only two significant figures in it. All right, so we one, two, that eight is gonna change that to a four, and our answer is 6.4. So let me say that again. When we're dealing with multiplication and division, we're gonna look at our measurements. The measurement with the fewest significant figures will drive how many significant figures will be in my answer. So since two sig figs is fewer than three sig figs, it doesn't matter that my calculator has nine numbers in it. My answer, looking at the calculator, or the answer that came from the calculator, one, two, we look at that eight, rounds up to a four, my final answer is 6.4. Very easy. You're gonna love this one. So here's some more practice. Round these answers appropriately. So why don't you stop the video and tell me how many significant figures are in this measurement, how many significant figures are in this measurement, and then how many significant figures should we have in the answer? Go ahead and stop. And welcome back. So hopefully you said one, two, three, four, five significant figures here, and two significant figures here because these are leading zeros. So five significant figures times two significant figures. How many sig figs should I have in my answer? I should have two. So we go one, two, that six is gonna change that to a 10, which means that's gonna be a five, so our final answer is going to be 5.0. All right, all right, let's take a look at this one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant figures versus four significant figures. And we got this giant number over here. How many significant figures should be in that answer? Seven sig figs, four sig figs, take a guess. Hopefully you said four, so let's count it out. One, two, three, four. That's a zero, it's not gonna change that seven, so our final answer is going to be 457. Point seven. Okay, now we're going to division. Rule doesn't change, but we want to pay attention. What mathematical operation are we doing? Because let me say it again, addition and subtraction, one rule, multiplication, division, a different rule. And so this is division. So we want to think about our measurements and their significant figures. So this measurement, one, two, three, four, five significant figures. This measurement, wow, look at all those zeros. Leading zeros, trailing zeros. Because these trailing zeros trail that number, they're significant. So we've got four significant figures here. So which measurement is going to drive the number of significant figures in my answer? This one here with four. So we're gonna look at our answer, one, two, three, four. That five is gonna round that nine up to a 10, which is going to change that to a two and a zero. And again, because this is a very large number, we are not gonna change this 161,955 to 1,610. No, you have to keep your zeros or put it in scientific notation. So it should be 1.620 times 10 to the fifth. Okay. 
All right, and down here again, multiplication. Now, we have numbers in significant figures, and remember that when we put, I said significant, scientific notation. When you put a number into scientific notation, you have to write all of the significant figures. So you can count, and you can see that this has one, two, three, four, five significant figures, and this has one, two, three significant figures. So that means our final answer should have three significant figures. So we go one, two, three. That five is gonna change that to a seven. And we wanna go ahead and put this very large number, because again, it's definitely greater than a thousand and should be written in scientific notation. So 3.07 times 10 to the ninth.